morning. Welcome to the morning momentum this Thursday morning. I am your host, Alphonse Omar. This is a daily compendium of local and international news, human interest stories, current affairs, and expert opinion. This morning, we have a guest in studio who we are going to have a comprehensive discussion with on matters cost of living. But before then, let's take a look at the top stories making uh, the headlines in the papers this morning, we start with the standard newspaper, no longer at ease. Now, the war within, all is not well in President Ruto's inner symptoms, and it is exploding into the open first. First, it was UDS Secretary General Malala taking up the battle to collapse Kenya Kwanzaa affiliate parties, and now Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa and Trade CS Moses Kuria have opened a can of worms with their war of words triggering resignation calls for the former Gatundu MP. That story is beefed up for you on page four and five of the standard this morning. Chief Ugali, not so soon. Maize farmers won. That story is beefed up for you on page 10. Cost of living, borrow leave from Kibaki, Uhuru's playbook, President Ruto told, that story is beefed up for you on page 6 and page 7 of the Standard this morning. International news, Kagame to run for fourth term. That story is beefed up for you on page 22. Also, Sports News Champions League thrills and upsets. That story is beefed up for you on page 4. Lastly, on the Standard this morning, I was headhunted to marry Governor's son, claims woman. That story is beefed up for you on page 3 of the standard this morning. Let's take a look at the top stories inside the Daily Nation. We start with the elephant in the room. Trouble in paradise. Who will blink first now? An online exchange between Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa and Trade Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria is the latest in a series of roles that expose a simmering power struggle and the soft and a belly of President William Ruto's ruling Kenya Kwanzaa administration. That story is beefed up for you on page four. Let's take a look at another story. Ten years on, terror strike that changed our lives. That is all about the Westgate attack. You can catch up with that story inside the Daily Nation this morning. Also, in UN summit, Ruto lauded for Haiti peacekeeping mission. Now, I thank President William Ruto for his willingness to serve as lead nation of a UN-backed security mission. Those are sentiments by U.S. President Joe Biden. That story is beefed up for you on page five of the Daily Nation this morning. Education, record 3.5 million to seat national exams this year. Candidates will seat the Kenya Primary School Education Assessment, the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, and the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education, KCSE. You want to catch up with that story on the cover page of the Daily Nation this morning. Lastly, not so fast, Mora. Will you marry me? World 800-meter champion Mary Mora had no idea what awaited her at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport as the rest of the passengers disembarked from the plane on Tuesday night. The team of Kenyan athletes was asked to remain behind. They were puzzled but obeyed the instruction, and as they alighted, Mora was con confronted with a surprise of her life. That story is beefed up for you on page 36, the sports news. Now, our guest is already in, uh, in studio, and we want to navigate the cost of living. Of course, it's a story that has made the headlines inside the standard this morning. And before we get up close and candid with our conversation, let's take a look at what the standard says about the high cost of living. Now on page six, Kopi, Kibaki, and Uhuru to stop rising fuel costs, experts tell Ruto. Economists have noted, while global oil prices were highest in Kibaki era, pump prices remained low. They fault the government's thinking that petroleum products are consumptive rather than productive, also, Budget Office faults a state's economy plan. Parliamentary Budget Office warns that increased taxes may lower KRA revenue. Team warns of possible slower growth and reversal of some Finance Act measures. Yes, now, uh, 
This morning we have a guest in studio. Kalima Rogers is his name. He is a political analyst and a teacher by profession. We have a great show lined up for you. And today we are decoding the high cost of living in the country. Welcome to the show. Thank you very and much. And good morning. Thank you very much. Well, let's uh, start with the top story that has made the headlines on the Standard newspaper, which is the cost of living. The president has been advised to borrow a leaf from Kibaki and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's playbook. Yes. What are your sentiments on uh, this? Actually, I want to agree with uh, the experts. Mm -hmm. The president should borrow leave. In the past regimes, uh, for example, if you look at uh, the fuel price, mm -hmm. there was what we were calling a subsidy. What did the president did when he came to power? He removed that. Mm -hmm. That is what is actually fueling, making the cost of life to go up. Petrol is number one. You know, Joe, you know when you, when you, uh, the price of the fuel is high. Everything. So I'm also of the opinion that he should actually go back and borrow the leave from the past regimes, how they have been doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. What are the key factors that have contributed to the recent increase in the cost of fuel in the country? Thank you very much. Uh, first is, uh, I might call it uh, international uh, cost of fuel, which is very, very high. Mm -hmm. The international... Uh, the international cost of fuel is very high. You know very well that uh, fuel, it is imported. And when it is imported, we Kenyans, we do not actually produce fuel. Mm -hmm. Neither do we uh, refine it. Mm -hmm. It is coming as a, a final word a final product. product. So I think uh, one of the factors that has contributed to this is uh, because of this international uh, cost of fuel, uh, the second thing is uh, what we call the exchange rate. Uh, when oil is actually, when the petroleum is actually imported, it is coming in dollars. And if you look at our, the Kenyan currency against the, 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 the dollar, you will realize that um, uh, we are, our currency keeps on eh, dropping. Yeah. dropping eh? So I think that is a factor. Uh, number three, we can talk about um, uh, what we call the taxes that are actually charged on our petroleum. If you look at the taxes, there are almost nine of them, mm -hmm. ranging from exercise duty, road maintenance, petroleum development levy, railway uh, development, and even the VAT. Mm -hmm. So if you combine all these factors, I think that's what is contributing to a high, uh, high, the the tax, the, the 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 how do you call it? The fuel prices uh, rising up. And uh, another thing, yes, the doubling of the VAT. Mm -hmm. In the past regimes, the VAT was up to almost eight. Eh? What did the president did? It was doubled. So if it is doubled, it is automatically the price has to do what goes up. Another thing is. Um, the stages in which when the fuel arrives in Kenya, the stages that it undergoes, when it is there in the storage, there is something that is paid. When it is, uh, uh, we also have uh, the people we call the suppliers, you know, they also want to eat yes. from there. So what is the implication? It has to go up. So I think those are the, uh, the, 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 the contributing factors that is actually leading to this uh, cost of life because petroleum is everything yes yes now uh, let's let's still refer to the papers this morning yes uh, there is another top story no longer at ease now there is a uh, controversy between the deputy president and the fred cs moses yes. Kuria. and last week after the fuel prices hiked he uh, did a controversial statement telling us to drill drill our own <laughs> our own oil yes what are your sentiments on that? Is it arrogance or what is it? Okay. 
referring to the sentiment of uh, 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 CS for trade, Bwana I want to term his sentiments, one, as barbaric, uncouth, abrasive, and it is uncalled for. Mm -hmm. Those are sentiments that should never come from a leader. Mm -hmm. If you look at the chapter, uh, chapter six of the constitution, mm -hmm. talks about leadership and integrity. How a leader should behave. I don't know what was in the president's mind. In the past regimes, we have seen the president, they were taking, uh, we call them the technocrats, mm -hmm. to be in the office. Now, there is something here that, uh, 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 you know, as a leader, every time that you open your mouth, there are two things. You either build or destroy. Mm -hmm. And even in the Bible, it is stated that the tongue is just a small organ, eh? but very, very what? Destructive. Yeah. So uh, uh, the sentiments of uh, 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 Moses Kuria, those are people who should not be in the holding public offices. So the president must do something. And it is good. It is all over now. Mm -hmm. Even to them, they are feeling it, that Moses Kuria should be out. Mm -hmm. Those are the likes of people we don't want. To lead us. Yeah. Well, we have to agree to the fact that the cost of living has risen to the detriment of Kenyans. Yes. And many households are struggling to make ends meet. Yes. What, what are some of the, the challenges that these families are going through to make the both ends meet? Right. Uh, just as I said earlier, one, these people lack food to put on table. Mm-hmm. Number two, the conflicts has actually risen. Household conflicts. Maybe this time if you go to Mze, please just give me something there. I go to the market. Eh? The highs <laughs> at which is the... <laughs> so I say that, uh, so uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have talked about uh, increased uh, rates of family conflicts. And again, you have seen people jumping from houses. You know, people at this particular time, they want to live according to uh, their standards. Eh? Mm -hmm. If you are maybe, you are living in a house that you are paying 10,000, what will you do? You come to a house maybe that is uh, 7,000 so that at least the, you can save something small. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, are there any government policies or initiatives in place to address the affordability of basic necessities? In my own view, the policies that I see them uh, putting in place, there was this issue of uh, subsidizing of uh, the fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a policy that the government brought in. It was a good idea because that was going to fuel uh, the cost, uh, uh, high production. But now there is a problem here. Okay, you reduce the price of the fertilizer. You increase the petrol. This person, a farmer, let me say a farmer who is in Eldoret. Fertilizer is very cheap, yes. This person needs tractors to be there. He need, after the harvest, he need to take these things to the market. So it, this our government, it is as if you are given something with the other hand oh, and the so other hand again <laughs> So, <laughs> so that is a policy that I can say. There was also a policy of um, housing, mm -hmm. the, the, the affordable, affordable, housing. affordable housing. This policy, you know, the, the Kenyan, even the president, even the, 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 the people who are concerned, they still don't know what, what is going to happen. And if you look at um, those who are the, <clears throat> those who are the working class, eh? If you look at their pay slip now, the moment we speak, it is burdened by this tax. In fact, there was it was a was it a, was it one percent or one point five, something like that, one point five. So the policies are there, but uh, the problem with our government is that they come up with the policies, and then after sometimes they leave the policies 
So that's what I can say as per that. Yes. Tell us the potential consequences, uh, or rather the potential long-term consequences of this economic crisis in the country right now. Now, um, the consequences. One, there is going to be what we call, there is what we are going to, uh, the increase in crime rate. You know, when you don't have uh, money in the pocket, what is going to happen? One, crime rates, especially in the urban setup, it is going to increase. Number two, there is going to be called what we call unemployment. There, yesterday, uh, it was not yesterday, over the weekend I, I, I saw there was this, uh, uh, the Kenya, uh, it is called FKE, Federation of Kenya Employers. Eh? They were complaining that when this thing continues this way, they are afraid. Many people will go home and many companies will fear employing people on a, a permanent basis. Maybe you will just go there and work as an intern and go back. So I've talked about uh, unemployment. It will still come because some will be told to go home. I've talked about um, uh, increase uh, crime rates. And then um, another thing that uh, uh, will come out is that uh, the moment you see the cost of living is going high, it means that there is something wrong with the government, the policies that they are, they are coming uh, uh, out with. Let them go back to the drawing board and look at the kenyans are hungry every person is hungry <laughs> and an angry man is an angry man they say that yes well are there any plans or discussions within the government to mitigate uh, the high cost of living especially in vulnerable areas uh, actually uh, responding to that of course there are some but just as I mentioned earlier, we always have good plans. But putting these things that we have into practice, or, the, or rather we, what we call implementation, the implementation is poor. Yeah, the other time you saw uh, the farmers were given fertilizers, yes. Now, uh, now uh, was it yesterday? I saw that there are these... Uh, the small markets that are always now built in the in every county mm -hmm. that is supposed to open doors for to give employment to the youths i think that is a, a good move um another thing that um <clears throat> let me talk about those two mm -hmm. those are the ones that, that i see you, yes you, you say building <clears throat> markets in every county and giving youths employment opportunities yes. is yes. a good move. Yes. How, how do you think we'll measure the success of, of that based on uh, the current situation? Uh, <laughs> actually, it is out, but uh, just as I said, we don't know how the implementation is going to be. This is our government. And they talk about, <clears throat> in fact, this, this regime one area where they have failed is that uh, they come out with good policies, but now the problem is there in implementation. Mm -hmm. So still we are not certain because of what is happening. It is not certain. Though they are doing it, according to me, in fact, sometimes it will not even work because there are even several markets that had been built those long time ago. But up to now, they have not been opened up. Mm -hmm. So maybe this one might also be a scam. Who knows? Great. Um, well, last week, I think the president marked one year in office. <coughs> yes. And uh, that is a conversation yes. we, we, we ought to have. Yes. But before that, let's take a quick break and then we come back with more discussion.
Welcome back to the Morning Momentum. If you are just joining us, you are still rolling with the host with the most Alphonse, so my is, is uh, my name. You can keep interacting with us via our social media platforms at Unibandasco TV on Instagram, Unimedia TV on Facebook and YouTube. Use the hashtag the morning momentum our guest is still in studio and we are navigating the high cost of living now my next question is based on a tweet yes. the trade cs made a while ago august fuel stocks will land in october the cost is well known and it's scientific september shipments will land in november costs are also known from there we move to winter in the u.s and expected stockpiles and then the bilateral arrangements between Saudis and Russia on the one side and China and India on the other hand, plus ongoing oil cuts. As minister responsible for private sector, mine is to advise business based on science, not on truthful voodoo. Now, are we supposed to tighten our belts for more tough times ahead based on this tweet? Okay. <clears throat> I Actually, Kenyans should be ready because uh, they should tighten their belt even more and more and more. Uh, the reason why I'm saying that is that uh, this situation, I don't see it changing now. Mm -hmm. So let us be ready for hard economic times. If you are working in your chamber, please do so. If you are in offices, please do so. There is nothing that is going to change. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know that there is nothing that is, uh, is, uh, nothing is going to change, if you look at Tanzania, which is just our neighbor, mm -hmm. the fuel price is 193 shillings, Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. eh? And Kenya, it is 211. And the other time I saw, <laughs> no, Kenyans are very funny. I saw those Kenyans that live at the border, Namanga, and there is this one in Migori. How do we call it? I'm forgetting the name. Mm -hmm. There is a border. I saw them going to the, the neighboring country to buy fuel. To buy fuel. What is, what, what's the implication? That thing will not change right now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our government. There was a time they told us that uh, there was a on one on one government to government agreement that the fuel were going to, to reduce. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Not really. In fact, it is, I don't know, it is doubling and doubling and doubling. So. Kenyans out there, please let us just work mm -hmm. and let us be ready for hard economic times. Well, great. Uh, before we went for the break, we talked about President Ruto marking one year in office yes. uh, last week. Yes. Now, according to you, from where you sit, yes. what is the scorecard of the, 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 the current government? <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Ban Alphonse. Uh, according to me, I will give a Ruto administration, let me say 35. I'm going to give the facts mm -hmm. why I'm talking about that. Now, uh, look at number one. What has the government done? There is what we call high cost of living. Mm -hmm. Number two, let us look at uh, what we call the rule of law. If you come to the rule of law, the rule of law is not actually applied equally to Kenyans. Some, you saw the other day how this man by the name of the former Mungiki man, Mina, he's yeah. called Maina Njenga. Mm -hmm. Every time he is abducted. Every time. And why do, why do you think that uh, that is happening? Because he has what we call a political affiliation. So according to me, the rule of law is not actually applied. Uh, another thing is uh, corruption. Mm -hmm. Look at what is happening. Corruption. Corruption, we have, uh, you know, I can say that this government, there is what we call uh, a banana. They rule this government like uh, a banana, uh, it is called a banana what? A banana republic, where each and every person, everything that you feel like you are doing, the rich are there at the top, they don't uh, give uh, uh, meaning to those who are uh, uh, at the lower, uh, we call lower state. Eh? So they just run this country like uh, a personal entity mm -hmm. where you just wake up one morning, 
to just do whatever you want. Yesterday, uh, um, I saw that there is what we call freedom, freedom of the media. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I saw a certain journalist at Langata. There was they were covering. There was this. There was this small strike. These people were working on Langata cement. They were talking about they have not been paid. And then I saw an officer assaulting a journalist. This our government has not realized the freedom of the media. The other time you saw when we had uh, demonstrations. So what happened? Some were getting into, the, the officers were getting into even houses. They were getting one inch outside their houses. Where are we? What does the constitution say? So another thing that I can also talk about is on, um, look at the government jobs. It goes without saying. The two tribes. Kenya is a country that is made up of up to 46 uh, tribes. But what happens when, when giving uh, government jobs? You know what is happening. And it is all over. It is in the public domain. So that's why I'm giving. There is still more that this government need to do. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I'm talking about the 35. If I'm not, that, that might be, how do you call it? The D, it is almost there, D minus, something like that. <laughs> yes. I see where that is coming from. Well, yes. in your sentiments, you've just mentioned um, the negative sides of the government. Yes. Maybe what is one thing you can applaud the government for within the one year they have been in the office? Okay. Where credit is worth, we need to give. On the fertilizer, if you go to various places, and this year, I think we are going to have uh, what we call a bumper harvest. So that's the good thing that I can see from this government. That's the good thing that I can see. Well, maybe uh, let's get back to our topic of the day, which is the high cost of living. Yes. What, what, what do you think can be done to reduce the high cost of living? Thank you very much. Uh, what we need to do, one, the government should actually put in place what we call sustained economic growth. Mm -hmm. When we talk about sustained economic uh, growth, that the government should create more opportunities where we, we have what we call job creation. So that is number one. Number two, the government must actually reduce the rate of unemployment in our country. You know, when a number of people are employed, we will have cash in the pockets. And the cash flow, there is what we normally call cash flow. That one will increase. So the, the government should actually create jobs. And how are they? Uh, going to create these jobs. We know that uh, agriculture is the backbone to the economy. Mm -hmm. But now, they also need to go to what we call manufacturing. Let them go to the manufacturing so that they open doors for more and more employment. Another thing is that um, uh, we, need to, uh, we need to remove the cost. It is called what it is called deregulation. Mm -hmm. When I talk about deregulation, I mean that the government should actually reduce the taxes for the goods that are coming in so that they can provide a conducive environment for investors to come. Mm -hmm. When you reduce those so many taxes, you are creating an environment for investment. Mm. So those are the things that they need to do. Yes. Well, what advice would you give to the families that are still struggling to make ends meet right now? Thank you very much. Now, my advice is that one, just as I said earlier, let us be ready for hard economic times. Let us live according to our standards. One, if you are you know, they, uh, on the, I want to talk about the issue of the rent. 
I want to give, this is now on advisory grounds. Eh? Now, there is always a policy that you are supposed to live in a house where a third, a third of your salary. Let's say if you are earning 20,000, mm -hmm. you should not go to a house which is 10,000. It will burden you. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what, 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 what do I mean by saying so? Let us go for the, uh, uh, the houses that we can afford. Make sure that it does not surpass a third of your what? Okay. Of your salary. The second thing is on the budget. Now, on the budget, let us budget only what we need. We need to leave uh, this thing that we, you know, we call impulse buying, eh? that you are just walking, then all of a sudden, yeah. We need to, let us only go for those things that we actually do what we need. And number three, uh, there is always, uh, if you go to maybe to the supermarkets, there are always what we call offers. Eh? Mm -hmm. So sometimes goods are sold in offer or on offer, if I may say. Let us opt to go for the cheaper, those that are on offers. Mm -hmm. Because actually, if you compare the prices, their prices, they are always uh, uh, below. And lastly, let us check on our extra income. When I talk about extra income, you know, somebody once said that your life will be determined by what you do after five. You know, most of us, those who are in the working class, around five people are home, right? So I will advise that let us have uh, an extra income. Let us have, let us uh, create what we call we create something that will generate an income extra. So apart from your work in the office, which is good, what can you do again mm -hmm. so that you actually, uh, you supplement uh, uh, your income? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I can say. Well, uh, as we conclude, yes. we have to talk about this, uh, the dollar versus the Kenya shilling. Yes. The, the the dollar against the Kenya shilling right now yes. is, is very high. How, yes. how has that affected the cost of living? Uh, actually, it has affected the cost of... Uh, our. If you look at the Kenyan currency against uh, the dollar, one US dollar, if you compare to Kenyan shilling, it is uh, 147, mm -hmm. which is very high. Now... The reason why this has actually increased this, you know, Kenya mostly, we do imports. Exports, the, 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 we do much on the word, imports. Mm -hmm. And when the goods come, they are always coming in US, do US dollars, dollars, which is very high. So this has affected this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Yes. Where, where do you see our country maybe in the next two, three years? Um, if the government will not just uh, the government if they are not going to come out with good policies in the next two to three years but uh, okay I can also say maybe <laughs> maybe the president want to make uh, the life very difficult for Kenyans and maybe when we are nearing the election period, you will start eh, lowering and then say that now you see. But I tell you, if the policies that we have, the first thing, if the president can, could just listen to the common one, inch, let us have the subsidies. Mm -hmm. There is no government that cannot work without subsidies. That one now, the burden, it is going to common one, inch. So that's where the president, those people who can reach him, I know is uh, is very understanding. Those people who can reach him, let us have the subsidies. We have the capacity to reach the president. This yes. is a media house. So yes. Using this camera. Which one? This, this one. one. Yes. Now, my plea is that the president, the common one, are crying. They are hungry. And as they say, 
goes, you know, you cannot joke with a, an angry dog. If you joke with an angry dog, it will bite you. Mm -hmm. Now, please, 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 reduce the subsidies. And that's why we were, borrow, borrow from what the past regimes have always done. There is no country that cannot do without the subsidies because the moment you take them out, it is opening door for a high cost of living. Yes. Brilliant. Now, as we conclude, let's sample a few sentiments here. We have Emmanuel Gona says, well, the issue here is not telling us about how it will be. Rather, we expect to hear the measures you are taking as the government. Brilliant. Davis Chirchir says, humility and respect is not bought. There are better ways of delivering information to your employers, Kenyans. I think that is in regards to uh, the sentiments of the trade CS. We have also Elvis Doso who says we have to tighten, uh, tighten up our belts. Tough times are...